Serving Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Jack McGee again with What's Going On? And who we have here is, is Dennis McHugh or Denny or That's correct. Denny or Den or That's correct again. Den McHugh. Yes. This gentleman here fixes battleships, <laughs> old battleships. This guy restores them. He uh, paints them, scrapes metal. And uh, what else you guys do in those boats? <sighs> Every, <laughs> everything that has to be done. You, huh? you work till you can drop. Work till you drop yeah, for yeah. six months. For six months he did this. Um, being a being a marine, I don't know anything about them. Well, but battleships, you do. We'll talk a little bit about that. Well, absolutely, I hope so. I hope so. I, I, I would really like to know what does it take for a guy to go do this. I mean, you're, it's volunteer, and you don't get work, you don't get paid for it. I mean, but the skills that you bring to uh, to this endeavor has got to be astronomical. Well, the talents that brought this together are amazing. The people are amazing who put this together out of nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then with the help of... Uh... Time to break. All right. Breaking. You're watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, TSPN. Yes, we're back again. Welcome again to What's Going On. We're talking with Denny here. Uh, Denny, could you, could you tell me some more about this... Uh, a battleship that oh. you got talked into reconditioning? Well, it uh, turned out to be a labor of love. It was kind of a, a situation that I looked at the local paper and they needed volunteers and they were bringing the, the battleship Iowa out of mothball fleet after 31 years sitting there getting rusted, etc. And they wanted to bring it back and rejuvenate it. And I said, well, how long is this project going to be? They said, yeah, yeah. six weeks. Yeah lasted six months. And now this started off the Mothball fleet there in the Carquina Strait. That's right, at Sassoon Bay. And Okay, then you had to move it from there to, to yes, Richmond? Yes, that's right. It had to get to Richmond, but there's a problem. They built a new bridge since the, the battleship went up there, <laughs> so it was too tall, it wouldn't fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they had another problem. All the silt had filled in, so they couldn't, there wasn't enough clearance for the battleship to get through. So they had to wait for it one day a year. When the, the highest tide hit, they chopped off the masts on top of the ship, and they floated it through the Carquina Strait after you, some you, dredging. You, you had said they took off 40 feet? 30 to 40 feet of the conning tower. That they just torched off. That's right. And they welded it to the rear end of the ship. Yeah, okay. You know. okay. And uh, uh, we have some pictures that show you I think they're they're running those. Uh, they're right running now? those. They're running those too. Yeah. And you can see the difference between how it came down and how it went out into the harbor. Here it is at in Benicia just before they floated it down to yeah yeah that's Richmond. beautiful absolutely. And there it is finished and ready to go. Looks like something that should be in a movie. Well, it it has been and it will be. <laughs> Another thing to realize about this ship now that we've reconditioned it, the Navy still owns it. Well, yeah. And yeah. it can be reactivated for service within 48 hours. Now they can. Yes. But before, they had to cut 40 feet off well, to get under the bridge. That's right. So and it's it a good thing a... it's now out of the garage. <laughs> Absolutely. It's now in the garage, and the wheels are tired, but pumped up, ready, ready to go. Absolutely. This is known as the Big Stick. That was its uh, moniker uh, after Teddy Roosevelt's speech about the Big Stick, carry a Big Stick. So this is the Big Stick. Battleship. He says here somewhere the president has been on this. Thing. That's right. This is also known Roosevelt, as the president's ship. Reagan, Bush. All three were on the ship at one given time or another. And I think your wife had something said something about reconditioning the the. the, the, the well, I was involved in reconditioning uh, Roosevelt's suite. It's suite. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. It's okay. the only ship in the Navy that has a bathtub. They had to put it in just for uh, for Roosevelt. Because, because of, uh, of his disability. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it had the elevators, which were only for a month, and then they took them down yeah, again. Yeah. So the ship has been uh, been used very extensively over three wars. That's uh, that's the other phenomenal thing, is is the awards that this has battleship nine has battle collected stars. over. 
How many different wars nine, was he in? Nine, three wars, nine battle stars. Second World War, Korea, and, and Vietnam. Vietnam, that, well, Vietnam, correct. They used yeah, yeah. it for shore, shore bombardment. And if they needed a, uh, a zone to land a helicopter, one shell of 2,700 <laughs> pounds, they threw it 25 miles. When it hit, it made a hole 50 feet deep and 300 yards were cleared. Where you could offload so they, helicopters. So they bring the helicopters range. in if they needed a, a landing zone. <laughs> oh, my God. The, I, the power of these uh, guns is just not to be underestimated. To launch a Volkswagen 25 miles. Yes. You know, that's what that shell would do. That's right? exactly right. That's, that's, that's pretty and amazing. pinpoint accuracy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, I had the privilege, and, and that's what it turns out to be, a privilege to be a part of this, to put it back together. When it came out of the mothball fleet, not only did they have to dredge and get it down there, but once we got it there, we found out that the superstructure of the ship, when it goes down to the deck, the deck itself had been reconditioned in 85, but they put down cedar yeah. rather than teak wood. Yeah and the cedar held moisture. And what does that do to steel? Right. Rust. Yeah, it ruts it. So yeah. our, our job was to take off the decking around the superstructure, then get to the rust, take the rust out by needle gun any way we could, put preservatives down, and then re Now, how much it. of that uh, teak has been replaced with Douglas fir uh, now? I mean, is it re have they done all of it, or are you still... Now, uh, there's about one-third of the ship still has the original teak, and it's in perfect condition. Now, you guys doing volunteer work. That's correct. Who's putting money into this? I mean, how do you uh, raise money to, to help well, the Iowa? I mean, uh, it must be some benefactors somewhere helping you. There has been, thank, thank goodness. Here's how it worked. Um, they've, the people down in L.A. wanted the ship, and they're... San Francisco Bay didn't want it. Three times it was offered, and they turned it down. But L.A. had enough money and benefits. They had Fleet Week all the time in San Francisco. They, they didn't want it? They didn't want it. They said it was, they're not a war town, and they had, didn't want anything to do with it. So That's I'll, another I'll topic. That. That's another topic, <laughs> and we're not going to touch that because yeah, yeah. I'm a little partial to that. But uh, So they got enough benefactors together to pay yeah. to get it through the straits and get it to Richmond, but then there was no money to fix it. Well, it's, there's a good chance that Hollywood could do something down there with it. I mean, <laughs> oh, why absolutely. not? Oh, absolutely. You know. But what uh, really made it work and viable is the state of Iowa gave $3 million to fix it up in their namesake, and that's what saved the ship. Oh, yeah, yeah. So anybody who visits the ship today, if they're from Iowa, they get free That That onboard. story you told me off air about the, the Japanese uh, surrender yes. was originally, you said originally was, meant was for, for the Missouri. The Iowa. It was meant for meant the, for the Iowa. Oh, meant for the Iowa. I see. Meant for the Iowa. Right. But because of but the president at the time, was, he said, wait a minute. Yeah, the president, <laughs> who was Truman at the time, Yeah was from Missouri. There you go. He said, wait a minute, wait a no, minute. <laughs> we're going to use the Missouri to sign it. So that's what happened. But uh, it was, you have to understand, this is the first Iowa-class battleship, the USS Iowa. Yeah. It was the first one of the kind, and uh, uh, it should have had the honor of doing that, but there was politics involved. I see, I see. Well... <laughs> Now, Every, everything seems to be about money or politics I, I'm gonna give or you, something. i got to tell you one last thing. This is the ship that took Roosevelt to uh, Tehran to, to talk with Churchill and Stalin. This was the ship he used. Now, while they're underway, um, the USS Perry destroyer yeah. was doing exercises and actually accidentally launched a torpedo at the Iowa. At the Iowa? Yes. Ah. And uh, the, they broke radio silence and said, we fired a torpedo, it's coming at you. And everybody panicked. The Iowa, took a, the Iowa took a turn to get away, and uh, the torpedo was coming at them. We're going to take a break, oh. and I want to hear that story. Oh, it's a I good story. Hear, after the break, we'll hear that story. You betcha. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.